Tassa Bhagavato Arato Sama Sambhutasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arato Sama Sambhutasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arato Sama Sambhutasa Bhutan Dhamman Sangha Namasa Today I'm going to be reading the first half of Kaidui Muti and Samadhidhamma uh, written by Ajahn Man, translated by Ajahn Pahidhana. I'm not sure how long it will take, so if there's time, I have a few uh, shorter readings uh, if there's space. If this fills up the, the space, then I'll just leave it at that and see what happens. And if we're still here next week, I'll read the second half. an introduction uh, from Ajahn Pahidhana. While Venerable Acharya Man was staying at Wat Sapatumwan in Bangkok in the year 1930 approximately, he composed the booklet Kandoyamuti and Samangidana. This booklet is written in Thai in a semi-poetical form, and it displays the teaching of the Buddha in an unusual but refreshing way. Both at the beginning and at the end, the author points out that this is a teaching by way of wisdom. There is little about samadhi or jhana in this booklet, and it might rightly be called a wisdom teaching. <clears throat> I've translated an English version with many corrections and rethinks, and I believe that this translation follows the intended meaning of the author. I've made no attempt to follow the poetical manner of the original text, for I don't claim to have any special ability as a poet. So I have tried to present the meaning that the author intended in a prose form, but I'm afraid that I may in due course see more hidden and deeper meanings in this text. I have heard that there are some people who dispute that this was written by Acharya Man, the well-known and great teacher. They say that there was another Acharya Man in the same lot at the same time. <coughs> possible that this may be true, but the text, which was written at that time by hand, was quite clearly signed with the name pra Buridato man wat Srapatuman, the author. It seems hardly likely that two bhikkhus should have this unusual name at the same place and time. <coughs> Namatu Sugatasa Panja Dhamma Kandani. I humbly bow down and raise my hands in praise of the, of the Venerable Sugata, the Supreme Teacher, the Sakyamuni, the Supremely Self Enlightened Lord Buddha, and of the Venerable Nine Navalokutra Dhammas and the Arya Sangha Savaka. Here I will speak of the Dhamma Khandas in brief by way of Satipanya. There was once a man who loved himself and whose thoughts were fearful of suffering. Wanting happiness and freedom from fear and danger, he wandered about. He said that wherever Sukha is, there I want to go. But he wandered about for a long time. His character was such that he loved himself and was very afraid of death, and truly wanted to get free from old age and death. One day he came to know the truth and abandoned Samudaya, the cause of suffering, and all the many Sankaras. He then came to a cave of joy where Sukha did not disappear, and the cave was like unto his physical body. He gazed all around this cave of joy. Dukkha collapsed, and he was completely at ease. He knew in himself that his former fear had diminished, and he looked back and forth as though there was a hill in front of him. Should he go and tell his former friends all about it? He feared that they would reckon he was mad. To put up with living alone and finding out about the way of calm, which means stopping the process of thinking and not associating with others, this is better than wandering about in an unseemly, boastful manner. For one would soon receive flattery and blame, which would, soon, which would just create disturbance and trouble. <coughs> There was another good man, afraid of death and full of apprehension, who came searching, and he spoke frankly and made one feel sympathy for him. He asked, saying, 
you've done a lot of striving and put forward much effort. And all this time, have you seen the true Dhamma, which the heart longs for or not? Hey, how does he know my mind? That good man wanted to stay with him as his follower, so he said, good, good. Footnote. This would, this would seem to refer to the first man, but... <coughs> that good man wanted to stay with him as his follower, so he said, good, good. I give you my blessing, and I will show you the way to a mountain cave of happiness where there is no dukkha. In other words, kaya gatas, kaya gatasati bhava. Enjoy it and admire it to cool your heart and it will cure all your troubles and turbulence. It is the path of the Aryamaksa. But whether you go along it or not, I am not going to force you nor speak deceptively in fun, for what I say will be the truth. Then he gave him some riddles to answer. And the first riddle was, what is Rawam? Footnote, not a Thai word. In Cambodian, it means to whirl around. He gave the answer, runs fast, which means that the nature of Vinyana, consciousness, is to be quick, going in the line, following the train of thought, sanya, memory, acts immediately without doubt or hesitation, <coughs> and the heart which dwells inside runs back and forth. Sanya, footnote, memory in all its functions. Sanya, which is strongly attached to external things, deceives the Chitta, making it restless and distracted, wandering afar, searching. It deceives one that those things are true when in fact they are like magical conjuring tricks. Question 2. Who gets totally free from all five khandas? Answer. The heart, of course. It gets free and dwells alone, not being caught up, attached, or involved in anything and having done away with the poison that possesses attachment. It's finished with delusion and dwells one and alone. Then the deceits of Sanya can no longer cause delusion. So pause for a second. My recollection is that the one asking the questions at this point is the teacher and the one responding to the questions is the student. And then it'll flip later. <clears throat> Question 3. In that which is called death, who are they that die and where? Answer. The sankaras are the ones that die, destroying the results of karma. Question 4. What is it that makes one go on revolving the round of samsara? <coughs> Answer. The tricks of sanya lead one to go on whirling about, trusting sanya and wrongly thinking gladly of going from this realm of existence to another realm, and so going round and round, the chitta being completely forgotten, and memory of it being shut out entirely, so that even by striving to find Dhamma, one doesn't see it. Question 5. Who defines and who determines what are Dhammas? Answer. The heart defines and the heart determines them by going to the Lord, their chief, Sanya, and no other. For it thinks that this is good, grasps evil, and forces one to be attached to love and hate. <coughs> Question 6. Eat once, and then no more searching to eat? Answer. This is the end of wanting to look and know, and there is no further concern to see what the future holds, for what was disorderly has been cured. The heart then sits unmoving on its throne, and all along it has been dispersed. Question 7. The four-sided pond, room full of water. Answer. <coughs> Dhamma. <coughs> Dhamma is the end of desires coming from doubt, clean and free from blemish, and there is no fear or danger. In this, sanya is attracted, is extracted, and sankara kanda causes no trouble. So the heart is full and overflowing without any lack. All is quiet and still in the chitta, and there are no doleful thoughts. 
This is something one should admire and be glad about at all times. For even if one has been in contact with the 10,000 heavens, it is not the equal of knowing the truth. The starting of some cars and the ending of desire, which are really valuable and important. Then memory remains just memory, without getting in the way, and the heart is not obsessed with anything, its struggles having come to an end. It is as if one were looking at the image of one's face in a mirror, but without any thought associated with sanya, because sanya is the same kind of thing as that image. Don't be seduced by the attractions of the world, sankara, things, for the heart moves and takes hold of the heart that is not free. It moves enough for one to know for sure that this has happened because of the change that takes place. This heart is the impermanence of the heart, and it must know the five kandas and their different types when the shitta changes. Before I understood this, I was deluded, believing that sanya was the heart and that there was an inside and an outside. Now my heart is the chief and it doesn't expect any support from one or any sanya, for it is not possessive in all things. Whether they arise or cease, I have no need to be possessive nor to guard against this fruit called sanya. It's like going up to the top of a very high mountain and looking at the world below and seeing all living beings. Note of explanation. Being extremely high and seeing one's own story from the beginning right up to the present is the whole path, maga, like a stairway. Footnote. The section in brackets was overwritten in the original text, whether by way of changing it or deleting it is uncertain. It's also rather difficult to decipher what's been written. Question eight. Does the water rise and fall in accordance with that state of truth, <coughs> such anger? Answer. One cannot rectify the changes that take place in sankaras. In the normal way, kama, which has been made, has no intentional malice against anyone. But trying to push it away or hold on to it is stupid and a form of evil in the chair. One must not think of going against the normal nature of things, sabbat which are in themselves true. If good and evil, which arise in various circumstances, have been, dis- have been discarded from oneself and are not entangled with one's sankharas, one is cool and peaceful. But when one knows the truth, one is bound to throw out the sankharas, which are always changing about. For having seen them and become wearied of them, one can let go of them easily, and there is no need to force this. Then the natural state is a peaceful heart which no longer accepts their reality. Question 9. The five duties, are they complete? Answer. The khandas are divided up into five sense bases of the sankharas, and each group has its duty, which is its business, and it cannot take on any other work, being fully loaded already. They cannot accept even the highest blessings and praise which make for happiness, nor blame the worst kind in which one loses everything. Altogether they accord with their true natural state and in all eight kinds, footnote, eight kinds refers to the eight lokadhanas, gain and loss, honor and dishonor, happiness and misery, praise and blame. Altogether they accord with their natural state, and in all eight kinds, the heart does not turn and become involved with them, because Rupakanda cannot avoid old age and illness. <coughs> but the Namakandas get no rest, like an engine, because they receive the results of the karma that has been done. Good things make them glad and gain heart. Bad things disturb and agitate the heart and create incessant thought like a fire burning in the chitta which is tarnished and dull. Thoughts arise of themselves of love and anger, but who's to blame? Wanting never to grow old or die, but can anyone do this? Such things are just not possible and all one has are vain wishes, like not wanting
trying to let the chitta wander about getting to know things, but wanting it to remain as one in the hope of making a refuge of impassivity. But the chitta is by nature changeable and never fixed and unmoving, although sanya can sometimes remain for a while. If one could know into, footnote, rutao, to penetrate and know, to be up to or on to, as in, I knew what he was up to. If one could know into the normal state of all five khandhas, the heart would be bright and clean and free from all blemish. This is the end of the story. So if one can know in this way, it is very good, because one sees truly and draws away, free, which is the end of the way. Then one doesn't oppose what is natural, and one accords with the truth. And whether one is rich or poor, all things and possessions, both external or internal, and good or evil, must cease, fade away, and be forgotten. One cannot grasp anything in the way the heart intends, for the heart is the instability of the heart, and it moves restlessly. But one can watch it and catch on to it and know it, and this brings great contentment. The small obscures the large, and knowing does not penetrate, and in this way the Khan is totally obscured down. Looking at the Khan is in dullness, one doesn't see down for the dust. No. Dust, as the Lord Buddha said, there are few who have little dust in their eyes to see Dhamma. As for Dhamma being greater than the Khandas, that can't be seen. Question 10. Have, have not, not have, have. What is that? Answer. Footnote. From here on, the questioner and the question change places. The pupil now asks the questions and the teacher answers. Here I am stuck and I cannot think of any way to answer. Please, please point out the meaning of it to me clearly and the answer, this riddle. The answer. Wherever there is birth or coming into being, there is that which has existence in various ways in accordance with the laws of cause and effect. Then it ceases and has not. Thus it is obvious that animals and people accord with the first part of the question, have, not have. The latter part of the question, not have, have, is done, which is deep and profound, and whoever gets there has reached the goal. This has not some cards, and has done, which is firm and stable. There, that's it, the single dog, true solitude. Dhamma, which is the one, unchanging, beyond birth in all realms, the supreme calm. Then, if there is any emotional disturbance of the heart, it's not accepted and is thrown out, quenched, quiet, still and clear to the heart. The heart then withdraws from all addiction and is cured of all passion and all wanting is completely dispersed and all wanting is completely uprooted, dispersing all doubt. As for being entangled with the five khandhas, this dies away and draws to a close and that which has made one whirl about in the three realms of the universe is broken and destroyed. Then, even the greatest desires are thrown out and fall away. Love ceases and is completely cured, ending the poison of possessiveness, and all troubles are cured and cease as the heart would wish. I'll leave it there for today. I'm just going back to the very first thing you said about um, uh, there being some question maybe about 
whether there was a, another Ajahn Man in the monastery, yeah. and a sense about why that might have, this text might have been challenged in terms of, did it really come from Ajahn Man? I have, I have no idea. I don't know the introduction. Hmm. I don't have a clue, but uh, uh, I can imagine that there would. You know, it, it's not strange to me that there would be, uh, you know, some because also that you have to r- remember the uh, the kind of. Uh, uh, how do you say, conflicts that were kind of raging in the Sangha at the time, and the forest monks were were kind of uh, looked on uh, as real fringe elements that were, were uh, and so that their authority was challenged and their, their uh, uh, place in, in the uh, kind of the pantheon of respect was challenged so that the the uh, and particularly by the administrative monks who mm-hmm. thought that uh, you know sitting in the forest and was just wasting your time and mm-hmm. you should be doing something really useful like getting a poly degree and, uh, and, and, and therefore this being so profound couldn't have possibly come from the forest monk but yeah, yeah. yeah exactly yeah that's my speculation. I've read, I've read this multiple times, I've read a lot of it, it's quite sublime. I've never understood, and I've questioned the idea of the student giving these answers. Right, right, right. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think it's, it's uh, you know, again, so you, he's, 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 to me, poetry always falls flat. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, it's a poetic device as opposed to a, and uh, you know, and it's always that sort of my kind of issue with poetry is, why don't you just say it? You know, <laughs> <laughs> but that's not a very artistic or artful <laughs> response. <laughs> so this was actually like a an expression. It was kind of like a story with yeah, people yeah, saying yeah. rather than. Like a factual account yeah, of, yeah, yeah. of a real conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's to, yeah to me it's like a, a a poetic device that is is being he's employing, and there, you know and and in reality this is Ajahn Man's only recorded kind of writing and only recorded um, so that uh, you know oftentimes if somebody is is a poet or, or is a writer. You know, it takes them a while to develop their kind of skill as a as a uh, find their voice in when they're writing, and uh, and, and this is is almost like a one off. But I heard it wasn't even like, even before they monk was he like some or some Thai rap mom. Oh yeah, yeah, he's, <laughs> he's like a master. Yeah, 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 absolutely. But then you know sometimes just things that that. Uh, you know, across uh, mediums, and sometimes, it, again, similarly, it takes a while to find your voice. Um, but that's that's a uh, yeah he he was, and that's it's a uh, you know it was a, that the 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 malam is a real that is also a a call and response uh, type. Um, uh, uh, a, a form that is employed in the, in the mala. <clears throat> For myself, you know, it <clears throat> feels quite fluid. I think one could take the teacher and the student as both being the same thing. You want to read it in so many different ways. One could, as opposed to like literally a teacher and a student meeting, take it as it's all happening. <coughs> and mm-hmm. Because I had the same thing, I had the same thought, especially today. Like, they're really good answers. These are the answers. <laughs> um, and the fact that it, it switches partway through, the whole thing just feels very fluid. And um, yeah, as opposed to like sort of literal, yeah, and then the fact that it changes, you know what I mean? You know, I, 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 I like the idea of, because like, I, I myself have these old internal dialogues. Mm-hmm. The heck's up with that? That's, 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 yeah. 
And I see, and it, what I, one of the other things that uh, he used a lot of put it similarly, a lot of things in, from the text are actually scattered in now. Kind of yeah. stuff in particular. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, he's a, he's a, I mean, that was one of the things where he say, you know, especially as a forest monk, um, but he was very learned. Yeah, and that's, there's a lot of what yeah. he's teaching. Yeah, and also he is, he is really good mates with Jokun Upali, who is both a, a, a city monk, a, a scholar, administrator, uh, as well as a good old Ubon boy, uh, who have, they share a, a, a background of, of where, they, where they grew up and appreciation for the practice. Uh, Jalko Nopali was, was a, uh, you know, well, very, he, he really kind of paved the way as a, um, a you know, kind of championing the the, the practice circles, as well as the the uh, uh, being a uh, uh, say an author and teacher, uh, and he was skilled with everything. Can you on top of me? Like I've heard Ajahn Pandya Wadu talk about this, the way the ties you sanya, because the way he even uses sanya is well, it doesn't really accord up in a use of the word. With the Buddha is much more of a like it is blue, it is red, it is yes. yellow. It's yeah. much more of a kind of like rudimentary conscious building they cover, taking uh, sensor elements in order to fabricate objects. Yeah. And or like I, I refer to more as like the nimitas of various objects. So you could even have a niche on something which would be like the yeah. fact that all objects have so you can tune your perception towards a quality of characteristic. And he's using song in a way where it's different. Can you illuminate about what maybe the tie take, what he might be doing? Well, actually, I mean, I think his his uh, his take is is fairly narrow, even by by Thai standards, and and uh, um, and I'm not quite quite sure why, uh, but certainly the uh, um, in the uh, just even the, the the basic definition of of sanya in in the Thai language. Uh, is uh, and it's as to, to me, it's actually quite uh, quite meaningful in the sense of memory and um, uh, I mean, I have to give a very loose, uh, uh, but that which which gives uh, meaning and value to 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 what one. Contacts through the senses, so it's like the uh, uh, yeah. One sees blue, one sees, but then it also that blue is because it's tied with memory. Then it's oh that sky or oh that that like there's I look out here oh that's green, but then there's that that those that blob of green is the building. The other blobs of green behind are trees. And so that but it, so it's giving. That's a function of of uh, of sanya, is it? It sort of through through memory and perceiving uh, things to be of something and have a certain value. Um, so it's uh, there's a certain ordering that it's it's helping to to uh, give shape to the the consciousness that of things that we are conscious of. Um, so they're sort of functioning together. So it's it, there's so that actually sanya is there's quite a few elements coming coming together. <coughs> so yeah, like it has a lot of layers of differentiation. Oftentimes we're moving more towards more specificity to mm. in, in perception and so like it. It's blue, but then it's the sky. And it's, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. So there's, 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 certain layers of, of, uh, of uh, uh, and actually, that's the, you know, in terms of the, uh, uh, like, cogn- cognizing is, uh, 
course, again, that's sort of that, uh, this is conjoint, it is not disjoint. So I like the, uh, some people translate it as recognition, you know, kind of like that. Mm. Because it's cognizing, but it's recognizing, based right. on... Yeah, to make sense of it. Yeah. <clears throat> I think the thing that struck me about the, um, the reading, just in it, itself, the content was how you know, a lot of the things he was saying there were very similar to the, the, the Ballad of the Liberation of the Condes. Well, it's the same, it's same, oh, same it's text. From that. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's a different, different, different exactly translation. Text, right? okay. That's a different I'm translator, thinking. yeah. I understand. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, and, uh, I was going to say. <laughs> gen- generally, <laughs> I, I kind of, I, I find one you, I remember somebody, one of the, this is in early days, uh, of uh, somebody describing describing uh, Lopapanyavato's translation style and it's another Damayut monk he said, yeah, dry as dust <laughs> but uh, uh, to me this, this kind of works yeah. Who did the other translation? That was Ajahn one? Jeff oh, okay. So Ajahn Jeff was, was right. really trying to hold the poetry of him uh-huh. and, uh, and thankfully and Lopapa Nyawara was just trying to, to get the, the kind of the, the meaning behind it, the thread of it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that my powers of recognition are <laughs> intact. <laughs> I'd have to go back and look at it. Yeah, yeah. Because, uh, yeah. You know, colors and different other things are quite trans- transitive. I understand what you're saying with, yeah. with the associative nature of the mind. I mean, it's, that's why basically it's the function of the brain is an associative matrix. Yeah. It does. Yeah. Um, so that's why I'm, you know, I'm still kind of lost at how Buddha doesn't seem to use something that way. I'd have to go back and look at it, but it, it, uh, uh, yeah, and I'd be, you just have to sort of take, again, especially when, when something is a, is a piece of poetry, you've got to give a, give a certain license to, or even in teaching, so, it's just word, yeah. There. uh, No, no, it's okay, it's okay, I mean, I think it's a good, it's a good answer, because, you know, uh, you know, just having something like a hook, something in your mind to kind of like latch onto. What's, mm-hmm. what is yeah, and, and on a certain level, that that's actually really good, if it because it's otherwise you don't think about it. 